Hey kids, welcome to uh, part two of our Magpie chatbot, Better Keyword Detection. This activity is going to introduce you to some new string methods, including some that are not even on the exam, but are super useful. Your teacher will tell you whether your class is doing this activity or not. Well, kids, we're going to do it because it's good to understand what's going on here. And this is the cool part of the magpie. Run the string explorer below. It currently has code to illustrate the use of index of and two lowercase methods. Kids, we remember both of these. Index of is looking for a position. Two lowercase is just making everything lowercase. Do they do what you thought they would? The method index of is on the exam and the method to lowercase is not. Just a little hint there, kids. Why do you think they might want to change this string to all lowercase characters? Why doesn't the value of sample change? Or on the code below, why do you think you might want to change a string to all lowercase characters? Why doesn't the value of sample change? Do string methods change the string? Try some other string methods here, kids. Let's go ahead and take a look at this code here. We have our class string explorer. We have a string method here. We have our string sample, which is the quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog. And here to demonstrate the index of method, we're gonna make an integer position, which is sample index of the word quick. And then we are going to print off index of quick plus the position variable here. And then this demonstrates the two lower class. This is just printing off two lower class, this statement up here. And remember kids, strings are immutable, so we can't change them. This is just making it to a lower class. And then we have some try our own methods there. Let's run it and see what happens here, kids. First part here, sample of index quick is a four. If we go up here, zero, one, two, three, four, that starts it off there. Two lowercase is just making everything lowercase. And after two lowercase, look kids, we still have the uppercase T. Because remember kids, you can't destroy it, you just have to change it. Why would we want to make everything lowercase? Well, if you think back to the by BYE example on one, you remember that when we type in by to the chat bot, if we typed in an uppercase B, it said goodbye, a lowercase B sent us to our random choices. If we convert everything to lowercase, then it doesn't matter if it's an uppercase or lowercase word, the word should be the important part there. Well, this is just showing the same thing there. What is the value returned by index of if the substring does not occur in the string? Well, let's go ahead and take out the word quick here because that's the word we're looking for. Let's hit run. You can see the answer is now negative one. It's not within the string. So if it's not there, the answer is gonna be negative one, kids. Kids, we can double check this here by clicking over here to this document that if the first occurrence of the specified strub string is out of there, a negative one is placed in there. So this is just saying that if no value exists, negative one is returned, my friends. Here we are. Back on RuneStone, better keyword detection. Kids, this is really the heart of the lesson here. All you're really doing today is copying and pasting this code into your program, but we really wanna take a moment and understand what this says before we do it. In activity two, you discovered that simple searching for collections of letters in a string does not always work as intended. For example, the word cat is in the string, let's play catch, but the string has nothing to do with animals. In this activity, you will trace a method that searches for a full word in a string. It will check the substring before and after the string to ensure the keyword is actually found. And this is some pretty cool code here, kids. 
Take a look at the find keyword method below. It is a while loop in it, while we haven't seen that before. A while loop repeats the code in the block below while a condition is true. A block is all the code inside of the open curly braces and the closed curly braces. So kids, it's pretty much all of this right here. We're gonna break this code down here in a second in the visualizer, but just take a moment and familiarize yourself with it before you move on. So to better understand this, let's actually walk through this visualizer here. We're gonna start with a new instance, magpie3, and our phrase find keyword is again, yesterday is today's day before. We're looking for day, and we're starting in the position zero. It's gonna go up and it's gonna run this class again. And what it's gonna be doing is looking for that phrase. So it goes over there to Maggie, it sees a phrase, we bring up our instance. Our statement, yesterday is today's day before, the goal or the word we're looking for, that's day. Start position zero. We're next going to go down to our trim. So we're looking for just that word there. And that's going to also take us to all lowercase. Not that big of a deal on this one because it was all lowercase to begin with. But this one is just taking everything to lowercase so we can compare words equally. We're going to go back up here and we're going to start looking for words. Our first position is six. If you look, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six. There's our starting position D for day. And what we're going to be doing is looking for the after and before letters. So before and after here, we're looking for what the letters are. Before it's going to be R. And then after that is going to be a blank because there's nothing there. It's a space. So there's not going to be anything there. Well, we're gonna look at the length there. And as you can see, our start position and our position, zero and six, they're not lining up too well. So it's gonna say, hey, we're gonna compare this before and after here, kids. So this bit of code here says, if our position is less than, or it is greater than before the letter, then it's not going to return the same value. So basically, we're looking for any letters before or after. And if there is, it's not the same. That means we're going to go back and we're going to go to the second part of the string because that one doesn't satisfy. So this one's 15. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. There we are. We're back up to the D. Now we're gonna start looking for what's before and after. So we go up to the string here. Where'd our little arrow go, kids? Uh-oh, we lost our arrow. And we're just looking for those positions now. So we have our position, we're looking for before and after. In this one, there's not gonna be anything before it, kids. We're only gonna find that thing afterwards. So we're gonna to go to an apostrophe here. Oh, I'm sorry. There is something before. It's a two-day, kids. So we got an O, and then we should still have our apostrophe afterwards. And there's our apostrophe. We're going to compare our numbers there, kids. Well, again, this doesn't match up. So 15 and 0, these don't link up because we have letters before and after. So we're going to move on to our next one which is going to be our last one. That's 21, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. I think I counted wrong there, kids. 21 should be the D there. And we're going to do the same thing. We're going to look for what's before and after. Before, oh, there's nothing, kids. After, oh, there's nothing. That means these positions are gonna be equal. And as you see, it's gonna compare them because those values now, we have nothing greater or less than after. You're gonna see it's gonna return a value of 21. 21 is the same as the position now. 
And that means that's an actual word, kids. So we're getting the start position, the after position. We're comparing the two values. We're comparing the letters before and after. And if they return the same value, then we hit a keyword. If not, we just move on to the next one. And that's it, kids. That's how the magpie keyword looks for. So it's just looking for that first letter. It's looking for all the same letters, looking for the last letter. It's comparing that string. If we get a value that is equal, it's the same letter. If there's other letters there, then it's not kids. And we move on to the next one. And kids, that takes us up to our activity here. You'll notice that we have our phrase all the way down here on line 178. Yesterday is today's before day. We have to just put some stuff in here, kids. You're going to notice that we have to print out the values before and after, and we have to do that on line 100. So if we go down here to line 100, and we just put some system.out.println, and this one we're going to do PSN. Don't forget your semicolon, and we're going to do this two more times, kids. We're going to do a before. And then we're going to do after. And this is going to show us the same things. So in this one right here, our yesterday is today's before. Again, we should get the same numbers. Let's run it and see what happens. If we look down at our phrase here, in our first one, we went to, again, our letter six, which is our D right there. Our after is blank, so there's nothing there. And before is our R, so it detects those words. Before and after, we just don't get anything printed off. The second one, we go over to position 15. And before that, same thing, O. And then after that is that. And then 21 is our last one. And this one is perfect. So it doesn't print off anything more because there's nothing before or after kids. It is the perfect word. Let's go ahead and just try putting one of these in here. This one here is looking for no. So our first one should be zero, one, two, three. And before it should be a K, after it should be a W. Let's see if we're right. So a three, a K, a W, and the position a seven. So as you can see, kids, all of this code's doing is just looking for keywords and making sure that those are the actual words like cat and catch. Pretty cool coding if you ask me. So what are you going to do? Well, you are just going to use the new method, repeat the changes you made to the program and activity two using the new method to detect keywords. You can use active code window above or use Replit version three, which is what we're going to be doing in here. Kids, this is really just preparing for the next activity. Single keywords are interesting, but better chatbots look for groups of words. Consider statements like, I like cats, I like math class, and I like Spain. All of these have the form, I like something. The response could be, what do you like about something? The next activity will expand on these groups. You'll get to add one of your own. So it's a good idea to start paying close attention to those common phrases now. All right, kids, we're over here at our program. And as you can see, this is the same one oh, we've been working on. And all I did here was right after our random responses from the other day that we had to add. We went down here and just copied and pasted the code from the RuneStone site. So it goes in between the code that was there, in between the regular statements we're looking for and our random responses. So all you're doing is just copying and pasting this in. But kids, this is only half of the problem because watch if we run. Right now, if we say, cat, we should get, tell me more about your pets. We do catch, tell me more about your pets. So it's not finding any keywords. And you're probably going, oh my gosh, Mr. Rhodes, what's going on? Well, 
if you get down here, kids, you will see that we created a new string find keywords. And really what we need to point to is that find keywords. And as you can see here, this is our string with our parameters in it. So find keyword, we're gonna have the statement, the word we're looking for, and the index we wanna do. And really, that's all we're gonna copy and paste into here. So we're just gonna copy find keyword. Remember spelling, because it's super important here, kids. And let's just go to this top one here. And all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna delete statement.index of, because we don't wanna do that anymore. What we wanna do is find keyword. What keyword? Well, let's go into our parameters, whatever statement the user's making. We're gonna look for the word cat in this one. And the position we're starting at, position zero, my little friends. That means when I go to run here, ooh. We get our talk, and if I do cat, I should tell me about your pets, but catch should go, Frasier is the real Frasier. Uh-oh. Kids, it looks like I still got some jokes from my other class in here. So my other response is Frazier's real name is Frazier. So that response is coming up with a random one because that's what it should do, kids. So all we're doing is just coming down here and we are changing with our statement index of and we are changing it with our new little one, find keyword. And then we are adding our parameters to it. And I'm gonna keep doing this for all four of my cat statements. Find keywords, where do I wanna get it from? Of the statement, what position? Well, that's zero, kids. And then the last one right here. Now our program is going to look for cat and compare it on our new program. So if I stop, and run, and we can talk. Let's play catch. Ooh, can't spell here today, kids. You don't say, I have a cat. <gasps> Tell me about your pets. Or I have a cat. And that's different from I like Kit Cats, which I do, kids. Interesting, tell me more. That's how our better keyword detection works. What you're going to do then today, kids, you're going to replace all of your statement.indexes of with the find keyword and the correct parameters. And that's really all you're doing today. And you're not doing it for just one, kids. You're doing them for all of the different ones. And that's really all there is to do. And we're going to add to this a little more tomorrow for our final part. Today's, we're just looking for keywords. Tomorrow, we're gonna to be looking for phrases. Pretty easy and pretty interesting if you ask me, kids. Hopefully you found this video helpful, kids. As always, if you have any questions, please come see me. Otherwise, I'll see you on the next video. See you later, kids. Bye, bye, see you later.